Kiwi are an ancient oddity and they're perfectly adapted for life in the undergrowth. Left to their own devices they can live for decades but most don't get their chance because the majority of chicks are killed within the first few weeks of life. Dr John McLennan has been studying kiwi for many years and knows how devastating predators can be for kiwi populations. Kiwi are declining on the mainland and particularly so in the North Island. They're declining quite quickly there, probably at a rate of about oh, 3 to 5 per cent a year. Wherever you go in, on mainland New Zealand, um, one of the main reasons for decline is the fact that these gorgeous little fellows here aren't making that journey to adulthood. Most of them are being killed in their first 20 weeks of life and it is in fact quite uh, exceptional for any of these chicks to get through anywhere in the absence of predator control. They need a place to live, we need to preserve their habitat but above all else we have to make that habitat safe and to make it safe we have to control predators now this beautiful little chick here, its main predator is the stoat and stoats are everywhere and that is why uh, chick death and recruitment failure is a common problem to all parts of mainland New Zealand. But if this little chick was to grow and reach a weight of a kilo or 1200 grams, it would outgrow the stoat problem because even as a fully grown adult, it would still be vulnerable to ferrets and dogs. Before you begin working to kill kiwi predators, you need to learn about these animals and plan a program that achieves your goals but doesn't cause unforeseen negative ripples. If you remove just rats, what will the stoats eat? If you take out the stoats, what will happen to the rabbit and the mice numbers? These things have to be thought through and there are best practice guidelines and experienced trappers available to help. It's good to target predator control to the times of year when the pest animals have the greatest impact on kiwi. For stoats, this begins when they leave their dens in October and runs through to March, which coincides with when kiwi chicks are most vulnerable and weigh less than one kilogram in weight. There are many different types of trap, and it is important to follow the recommended best practice for each one. New traps are being developed all the time, but the basic trapping principles to follow can be applied to most equipment. We are going to look at the traps most likely to be used by community kiwi protection projects to catch different types of predators. Remember to take all health and safety precautions to avoid being injured by traps or catching a disease from handling dead animals or tainted traps. You also need to be careful to make sure you only catch the animal you are targeting. We don't want to put any other species at risk, especially kiwi. Trapping stoats is usually done with a trap called the Dock 150 or 200, or fen traps set under covers. You'll have the most success by putting traps under a little overhead vegetation where you would expect to find stoats, that is, along streams, bush tracks, roads, fence lines, banks, ridges, and where their prey is found. Okay, Nicola, what we do, the mustelids, the predators we're trying to get, love tunnels. Um, so we use tunnels, in this case it's a plastic tunnel, you can use wooden ones um, that I've running through it. And the other thing is too, it, these are kill traps, fens in this case, fen mark 6 in this case, so that keeps the non-target species around. The last thing we're going to do is catch a kiwi. Okay, so what we do, on a reasonable level place, so what, you can dig out with a spade, or in this case what I do is use the, use the tunnel itself. This is a bit stony, when you're, when you're up, up on the on the bank a bit further, the, the fresh dirt really works too as an attractant for the mustelids. I think it's a burrow or something. Yeah. Nice and nice and fresh to establish the trap. And every time you come in to check the trap, it's good to keep it clean, keep the track in, um, and turn a bit of dirt. So what I do is make the compression, and then we look at putting the fins in. It's a scissor trap, scissor kill trap. Put one thumb here, one thumb there. Over nice and gentle. That's the, that's the first, the hardest bit's the first bit. Take around two hands controlling it. It's a little safety here, you want that out of the way. Some people take them off. Squeeze it down and then just flip the trigger over. And what I'm doing underneath is pushing with my fingers. So I push with my fingers to push the plate, or treadle's the proper name for it, I think, up there. So there's no weight 
You don't want to be pushing this with your thumb and bending it. Some people like to use this little safety hook. And what they do, same, same as before, one thumb there, one thumb there. Squeeze it over and they put the safety on and it gives them a, that trap's not set but it's, the spring's taut. Then they have a second go, squeeze it down, flip that over and once again my fingers are pushing the plate up from behind. Yep. And that safety, you've got to be careful the old safeties fall off. So let's make sure it's on. Yep. And then absolutely make sure it's off when you leave the trap. So we're using a tunnel, in this case we're doing a double set, double set in the theory, we haven't got too many trap sites, so if it's a good trap site it's worth two, um, and if you get a rat or even another stoke, you quite often get a double hit of stokes. You can just put one trap in, but it's important that you block the end of the tunnel. Okay, we've got both tra traps in, these are anodized, but I still put a little drip, if this is inox, just a lubricant, just on the treadle, and I do that each time I check them port that works and we pin them down so they don't go around a flood. The bait we use, that our number one bait here at Fongaro Heads is salted rabbit, easy to prepare, stokes like rabbit and we the only reason we salt it is so that it lasts longer. Keep that off the ground so it doesn't get dirt on it and go rotten quickly and so that there's airflow going through there. Remembering what we want to do is get that stoke to walk in here and stand on that treadle. So whatever trap it is, you've got to haze it in. If it's a wooden tunnel, you can use wire mesh. In this case, we've got an earth floor or stony floor. So what we do is we haze it with just little sticks, make a little palisade. Like it's a little par site. Because we're directing traffic with it. The, um, these plastic covers are quite good at funneling the uh, animal through. But for the extra couple of minutes it takes each time you do a trap, this is a big makes a big difference I think to your catch rates and in, and more importantly you don't end up with a trap shy animal and over we go final look through to make sure it's all sweet and you can either pin that down or what I like doing is I think it's easy, a couple of rocks stops other animals interfering with it and it means when you come to trap check it all you gotta do is take the rocks off the fin actually jumps up and that's why the tunnel's important, contains the stoke within the tunnel and also make sure you don't put your head in over the front of it when it when it goes off. Todd, how often are you likely to check this trap once you've set it? Okay, it's bait dependent if you've got, you want your bait to be still luring the animal in. So with a soldered rabbit, we're looking up to three weeks in summer. If it's going rotten quicker than that, you might have to do it two weekly. Um, and between four and six weeks in, in the winter here in Northland. It's actually important that you're not coming to check them every day. Some people get a bit obsessive and start checking their traps every day and I think they just leave too much human smell around the place. Yeah. If you're catching a lot of rats, other bycatch, you want the traps cleared out. Something you can do to direct, attract the stoats right to your trap site is drag a rabbit and what I normally do is just even give them a bit of a flick in the guts so you get a nice smell of the rabbit and you can drag that towards your trap from quite a way away. Get a nice smell of rabbit. And here, do the same the other side. From as far back as you can, as you want to. And um, just as an added attractive to bring the, the predators into the trap site. Ferrets are the largest of the three mustelid species in New Zealand and are more likely to be found on grassland or bush edges. They mainly come out at night and have their kits in their dens during October and November. Ferrets can be caught in cage traps or kill traps in tunnels, and rabbit bait is also good for catching ferrets.